At the start of year 12, I set out to design and construct a desk using walnut and rock maple timber to provide me with a comfortable ergonomic workspace to aid me in my study during university. After finding some inspiration for my project, I thought of many changes and modifications which I would make to finalise the design of my desk. Once I had the framework for what I wanted my project to be, I spent many hours hand sketching and drawing on CAD software to figure out all the small details. This time lapse shows the process that I took to design and draw my project on Fusion 360, which is the CAD program we use at school. In addition to creating the plans for my project, I spent a lot of time using the animation tool in Fusion 360, which included exploded views, allowing me to have a better understanding for what was required to construct my project and what it would look like once it was finished. Upon starting practical work in Term 1, I began constructing a variety of jigs and prototypes for the encasement. The encasement has an extremely wide curve, meaning the only way to construct this would be using kerf cutting, which is why I needed to construct an enormous jig. I screwed and used a variety of joints to build and put together the frame. I then screwed some bendy ply around the outside to create an even surface to clamp the prototypes and encasement onto. There was a lot of trial and error involved in determining the best way to cut the curves. The more cuts that are put into the curve, the smoother the curve will be, however causing it to lose strength, meaning I needed to find a balance between strength and smoothness. Cutting the veneered plywood down to size marked the first cut for my actual project, after which I started cutting the kerfs on the table saw. In the meantime, I started work on putting the tabletop and the back together, selecting the desired grain considering both aesthetics and timber movement. I had to glue the tabletop in two sections consisting of three pieces so that it would fit into the thicknesser, meaning that once it was fully put together I only had one edge to worry about. After doing a practice glue up for the encasement I started perfecting the jig ensuring it was strong enough and square. I glued the encasement in two parts, the flat section and then the curved section. I routed a stopped dovetail housing joint using a handheld router and a router table so that I could attach the tabletop with maximum strength and structural integrity. Here we are cutting down the encasement size to the desired length and angles on the table saw. To curve the legs, I needed to laminate thin veneers, however some of the timber had cracks running through it, which needed to be filled in with epoxy so that it wouldn't break. I cut, thicknessed and drum sanded a total of 123 veneers throughout my project, 
This took an extremely long time. 90 of them were just for the legs. Due to the time I spent making a solid jig which could survive numerous glue ups, the tedious process of gluing my legs together was made a lot easier. Once the legs had dried and I had chiseled the large clumps of glue off, I then drew a datum and planed down one side so that I could cut the other side on the table saw. After some sanding, I added a round over on every edge of each leg, creating a more high quality finish. The legs were then perfected with extra veneers to fill in the gaps. A design modification to my project was the inclusion of these circular pieces called jelly beans, which increase the leg connection strength with additional surface area for glue. After the legs were connected to each other, I drilled two holes through the middle to add dowels, which would increase the vertical strength. I then turned down the dowels to the correct size so that they would fit in the holes. With one breaking, I was lucky to have made these spares. I then glued in the dowels, adjusted them to line up properly and cut them down flush once they were dry. To attach the legs to the rest of the desk, I first screwed and glued some blocks onto the top of each leg to give some additional height. I then lined them up with the encasement and locked them in place using batten screws so that the legs could be detached if required. Making the back rail was a much simpler process compared to everything else just cutting to size and gluing edges together. To make the large radius curve across the timber, I used AutoCAD to laser print a template onto MDF, which I could trace onto the real piece and cut and sand to the desired shape. Similar to the legs, I added a round over on each edge for a high quality finish and then secured it into the legs with domino joints. Building the shelves was a very similar process to the legs in relation to the building of jigs and cutting of veneers. However, it was made harder due to the width of the shelves being significantly wider and harder to clamp. To ensure that the shelves were locked into place, I routed stopped housing joints for each of them to sit in. I continued to use the router to fit everything together, including the rebate joint on the curved back, where I also drilled the holes for the dowel.
To cover up the kerf on the front, I laminated veneers across the encasement jig and biscuit joined it onto the front of the desk. To do the top of the encasement sides, I used a single short grain veneer taken from my tabletop offcut. For my curved draw sides, I cut four bits of wood with angled edges each. I was then able to glue the wood together to achieve the angles to make the curve. By running the timber over the top of the table saw, I was able to shape the inside of the curve. However, I had to shape the outside curve by hand with the orbital sander and a smoothening plane, which was a very challenging process and consisted of a lot of back and forth between sanding and checking to see if it fits. To cut the housing joint for the center shelf, I had to make a jig as I was routering onto the curve. I then designed an inlay to use on the flat shelf, and then used the Epilog laser printer to burn a recess for the rock maple veneer. I spent a long time looking for a concealed hinge that would work for the flap below the center shelf. I finally settled on using barrel hinges, which needed to have a hole drilled in each piece to insert them properly. I drilled a hole in the center of the back below the middle shelf, allowing the access for cords to come through and be hidden behind the flap. Once this was cut and routed, I glued all the components together and scraped the glue out of the edges. To make the rebate joints on the curved draw front, I created a template so that I could follow it using a flush trim router bit. Instead of turning all the dowels that I needed on the lathe, I instead used a jig block over the table saw which fed through a thin bit of wood creating a dowel. I began the final process by perfecting my project once all the construction was complete. I did this by filling the knots with epoxy and covering gaps with additional veneers. I also glued in the draw runners and stoppers. I finally began sanding my entire project through the grits and then applied two coats of an Osmo semi-matte finish. Overall, I'm extremely happy with how my project turned out, finishing in the required time frame with no major design changes. This project looks better than what I thought was possible and will provide me with a large, stylish, at-home workspace.